residents take part in the annual Great Guam Shakeout. We take a look at the action and how the event helps students plan and prepare in the event of an earthquake. Half a day and good evening everyone. Welcome to Primetime this Thursday, October 20th. I'm Nick Delgado. And I'm Hannah Devon. So thanks for joining us. And topping our newscast, a man acquitted of attempted murder in a Dededo shooting now faces new charges in local court. Investigators say this time he was caught with drugs inside the prison twice in the past couple of months. 38-year-old Jerome Camacho Cruz is charged with two counts of promoting prison contraband and possession of a Schedule II controlled substance. Court documents state the prison's specialized operations response team found meth inside a folded piece of paper during a random search back on October 2nd. It was found hidden in a gap between the cell door frame and the wall at Cruz's cell. Investigators say the area that was painted over. Prosecutors also allege on August 25th, authorities found meth inside Cruz's clothes in the prison. This happening as Cruz was being tried in an attempted murder case that he's since been cleared from. Cruz allegedly admitted to police that he did use the drug meth. Department of Corrections Prison is investigating how he got the drugs inside. He was caught on camera allegedly stealing from a woman found dead inside her parked car in Dededo. 44-year-old Anafonso Nucos is charged with theft of property. Police responded to the strip mall off East Buena Vista Avenue just before 9 in the morning Monday after authorities say a woman who family reported missing was found dead inside a car. Court documents state the victim was last seen going into her car around noon and never left the area. Investigators do not suspect foul play in her death, but surveillance video captured Nucos allegedly opening the car door, snatching the purse of the victim before taking off. Police reports stating the purse contained $400 and a cell phone. Nucos allegedly telling police there was less money inside. Well, it was just a couple of months ago when a man allegedly threatened to blow up the Guam Memorial Hospital. And now they're boosting their security measures from bulletproof areas to extra security guards. Bulletproof doors and walls and highly trained security personnel are some of the new measures the Guam Memorial Hospital has adopted. Their goal is to protect patients and staff from dangerous intruders attempting to enter into the emergency department. New safety precautions include where people must enter from. The trauma entrance will only open the doors for ambulances transporting patients. Everyone else must go through the main entrance where they'll walk through the Sally Port doors. These doors are equipped with a 2,000 pound lock if activated in an emergency. The Sally Port is further equipped with a bulletproof wall. The new measures come just months after a man allegedly threatened to blow up the hospital, triggering a lockdown. Additionally, security personnel are undergoing intense training with the Department of Corrections and are also trained in knife defense, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and basic jujitsu. GMH reminds patients, family members, and staff that safety is their top priority. And the Guam airport has taken a major hit since the collapse in global travel due to the pandemic. To boost revenues, GIAA is seeking greater flexibility in its concession and other lease agreements. They want to increase the current five-year limit on such contracts to up to 30 years, Nestor Lakanta reports. Your written testimony. Airport officials say the current five-year contract limit discourages companies from investing. It's too short a time frame and too much of a risk for them. Airport Executive Manager John Kinata. As an example, our food and beverage concessions are currently operating on short-term leases, uh, uh, short-term lease extensions, which negates the ability for companies to invest heavily in improvements. With a clear uh, path laid by, this, uh, by the promulgation of rules and regulations for the competitive solicitation of concession agreements, GIA will be able to finally and substantially improve upon the offerings of food and beverage concessions. But the legislature imposed the restrictions about 20 years ago to ensure that potentially lucrative deals receive the appropriate public scrutiny. Senator Joanne Brown. We'd like to successfully know that those leases are clean. And I'm sure the people that in the private sector want to participate want to make sure it's clean. Some don't because they don't trust the government. And I don't blame them. Longtime airport consultant Frank Santos says there are also federal checks and balances in place. Non-aeronautical leases. The FAA requires us to lease those properties at fair market value based on a recent appraisal rate. 
There are a number of long-term lease agreements already in place. They were grandfathered ahead of the current law. Meanwhile, the bill would increase the lease agreement term to up to 30 years and up to 10 years for concession leases. Senator Tello Tidegui offered her conditional support. And transparency is the key. I mean, the intentions of the airport is very good. Um, but being transparent is even more important. For KOM News, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Did you join in on the Great Guam shakeout earlier this morning? At exactly 10.20 a.m., families, schools and businesses practiced the earthquake response drill. Drop cover and hold on. Daniel Perez joined the thousands of students for this event. He shares how things were shaking at two local schools. The Great Shakeout began in 2009 in Southern California and eventually spread across the world. Its goal is to increase earthquake awareness, preparedness and response to the public by practicing how to protect themselves during an earthquake. Here on Guam, the majority of its participants are from the grades K-12. to KOAM was at a pair of schools to check out if they were ready for the Great Shakeout, starting with a kindergarten class at Finnegazen Elementary. Why do we drop? So we, so we won't get hurt. And why do we cover? So Asher. So we can be safe. We can be safe. And why do we hold? Mariana? So if the desk moves, we don't get unhidden and we and so we could not get hurt and we could go with it. That's right. So if the desk moves, we move with the desk. Over at Ukudu High, Miss Andrina Palomo and her class were more than ready for the drill. We do practices um, with students. Sometimes I have to prepare on my own what we should do in case of an emergency, should it actually happen. And as far as Ukudu Junior Jasmine Bustos can remember, she's been participating in the Great Shakeout her whole student life. Ever since elementary, we've been taught and pretty much trained since then what to do in case of an emergency like this. The Great Shakeout happens every third Thursday of October at exactly 10.20 a.m. Along with Guam, the Shinomai also took part in the shakeout. Doing this exercise every year is vital, as you may only have seconds to protect yourself before violent shaking knocks you down or drops something on you. And by doing this, you and others will be much better prepared to respond. Daniel Perez, KUAM News. Well, still to come on your news leader, we head up to Saipan for another gubernatorial discussion. And we're wearing red to honor our nurses for Emergency Nurses Appreciation Week celebrated this month. Keep it here to KUAM News. Half a day, I'm Eddie Calvo, and I've had the good fortune of knowing and working with attorney Tom Fisher for several years. Tom is a highly intelligent man who knows the law, and he's very serious and mission-driven. He's focused on getting things done right, and he doesn't waste time. Smart, determined, and efficient, and that's exactly what we need in the legislature. Please vote for Thomas Fisher for Senator. I'm Tom Fisher, and I approve this message. My name is Leonza Selvage, and I have a four-year-old daughter who goes to lots of learning daycare. So with the rising cost of living, it helps tremendously with bills. I don't have to worry about paying for childcare services. Knowing that this program is offered to our people, most especially our children, I think something to definitely be grateful for. I learned about Program in Penilin from the mayor's offices here. And uh, my initial reaction to the program, I was actually in disbelief that this program offered free childcare services to our people. I wanted to give my mom a break for a little bit. So when I found out about the program, I jumped right on it. I was relieved because childcare at no cost. I'm thankful for this program because I don't have to worry about an extra set of bills coming my way. I'm grateful to the governor, the lieutenant governor, everyone behind the scenes that made this happen. Need help paying for childcare? Guam families can receive financial support through Programan Pinilan. Learn more and apply at guamchildcare.com. Introducing the new Choice Bundles from GTA. Choose from the services you want and save big when you bundle. Fast internet speeds, unlimited mobile data, digital TV that you can stream anywhere, and digital home phone for Guam's most reliable network. The more you choose, the more you save. Over $1,000 a year. And for a limited time, bundle internet 75 or higher and get a $100 account credit. Visit GTA.net and use our bundle calculator to see how much you can save. GTA, we start with you. People from all over the world call Guam home, and this diversity defines who we are as a community. That's why in Washington, D.C., we need a strong, passionate voice to speak for all of us and not just a few. We need James Moylan to represent all Guamanians. 
to make sure the changes happening in our island are for the better. This November, vote James Moylan for U.S. Congress. Guam's future hasn't been written yet, and that's why we need Jim to lead us all there together. Fear and intimidation has no place in our government. Yet Tony and I hear from many people they are being intimidated to support the current administration. They're being told to put campaign signs in their yard or bumper stickers on their car. Tony and I will never threaten or intimidate. This is not what our island is about. This has no place in our community. It's time to restore our values and traditions of honor, duty, and respect. It's a new season. I'm Felix Camacho, and I approve this message. What you need to know from the Northern Marianas. Follow KUAM Cinema on Instagram for the latest regional headlines. Welcome back. Regional public health leaders from six islands are convening for the Pacific Islands Health Officers Association Executive Meeting. Human resources and non-communicable diseases are top of mind. Regional correspondent Tomas Manglotnia has the details. We see how we can raise our voices as unified Pacific Island nations to raise the issues of health concerns, health disparity, health equity. So it's not just on COVID-19 really, it really encompasses all the different areas of health that are important to the different regions. Regional health is top of mind for public health leaders convening on Guam this week for the Pacific Island Health Officers Association Executive Board meeting. So a lot of our folks that were impacted by COVID-19 were those that had existing chronic conditions. And so uh, the acuity of that issue of chronic disease is still very much with us. And this meeting is, is to try and grapple with that a little bit more. They're discussing lessons from the pandemic and the ongoing battle with NCDs. Another area we touched on was the Guam Public Health Lab, that project that's moving forward, and how that lab, when we open it up in our plan in 2026, is going to be a critical and a significant investment in the region. Those investments, though, are met with another issue, a lack of medical and health professionals in the islands. That was an issue 20 years ago, and it's an issue now. Uh, I think there's a lot to sort of um, tackle with that. One is the, the actual education system itself. One of the common uh, challenges we have is the issue with uh, human resources for health. Um, we do have a lot of um, brain drain, as they say, in, in the islands that are uh, leaving uh, to the U.S. mainland and, and other places abroad. So that's one of the things that I think uh, collectively we're trying to address. Tomas Manglonia for KUAM News. CNMI Republican gubernatorial candidates Governor Ralph Torres and Senator Vinny Sablon closed out the three-night town hall hosted by the Northern Marianas College on Saipan. Regional correspondent Tomas Manglotnia reports. Candidates, your question is, how do you intend to confront the likelihood of a second wave of furloughs for the CNMI workers, given the expiration of ARPA funds? It's a question that everyone is asking, and it was asked at the last night of the Northern Marianas College's gubernatorial town hall. Republicans took the stage for the last time. Right now, we have our tourism. I have spent money on ARPA funds, understanding that tourism it's not going to happen next month. That's why we've made so much investment to bring in our Japanese market, uh, continue to bring in our Japanese market, our Korean market. And with MVA, I'm so proud that they just approved another destination, a uh, CNMI uh, tourist um, source for Australia and perhaps even Philippines and Vietnam. Torres says it's making that investment into the NMI's bread and butter that will strengthen the island's backbone to withstand any further hits, be it typhoons or public health emergencies. We come from a small island. Our population is about, I think, maybe 50,000, in between 50 to 60,000. The pool is, is, is very limited. <clears throat> so we need to build a program where we can find a balance between what we need from foreign skilled workers, how to build our own local capacity, and how that's going to work to sustain the future of this Commonwealth. The Republican team is putting their plans up against independent candidates Lieutenant Governor Arno Palacios and Mayor David Apatang and House Democrats Tina Sablon and Leila Staffler. If none of those teams get 50% plus one of the votes in November, there will be a runoff election. Tomas Manglonia for KUAM News. To Soka or not to Soka, CNMI Governor Ralph Torres has rescheduled the State of the Commonwealth Address in an attempt to call for a joint legislative session where he can formally deliver it. 
the SOCA, to build which upon last this appropriation. years ago, is constitutionally required to happen at least every year. The new time and date this year is October 31st at 10 a.m. at the Kensington Hotel on Saipan. The governor's choice of location has been criticized by some legislators as extravagant, as the multi-purpose center facility is traditionally used for free for the SOCA. The speech at the hotel is open to the public and the governor says all are welcome. Some House Democrats are calling the event a campaign rally ahead of the November general election. KUAM reached out to the CNMI House Speaker Edmund Villa Gomez and Senate President Jude Hofschneider for comment on whether they will call a joint session and to allow the governor to take stage in line with tradition. Speaker Villa Gomez told KUAM that he's meeting with leadership today to discuss it and address their concerns. Senator Hofschneider says they'll address the matter in session on Monday at 1 p.m. And the Guam Memorial Hospital's intensive care unit is now equipped with eight new state-of-the-art beds valued at $20,000 each. Governor Lou Leon Guerrero was at GMH Wednesday to show off the new beds, which were paid with federal funds. I understand that uh, it has these air mattresses on board, which makes for better circulation while the patient is in the hospital in bed and much more comfortable. Uh, I think uh, recovery uh, and healing does get uh, very much promoted by the environment that you're in. The hospital says the pandemic revealed just how short they were in handling a high number of patients. GMH says by increasing the number of critical care beds, it's better prepared to respond to future outbreaks and surges. Happy Emergency Nurses Appreciation Week. Today we're celebrating our nurses who stand strong in the face of adversity. It's why we're matching in red to show our appreciation for our nurses. Matsuki Hirayama has more on tonight's Coordinating for a Cause. Hannah and Nick, I'm also in red today. While Emergency Nurses Appreciation was celebrated nationally last week, any time is a great time to celebrate and recognize our frontliners for all they do. And today we meet with Jeanette Florick, who also shares with me her battle with breast cancer, even while doing her job to save others. It's a battle on both fronts for nurse Jeanette Florig, who's battling breast cancer and the COVID-19 pandemic. Actually, I was, um, I just uh, finished my breast cancer treatment at that time, but, and then um, I went back to work on March, but I was sent back home when the close down happened. But her commitment as a nurse had her going back to the front lines, even though she is immunocompromised. COVID-19 did not respect after five o'clock. It did also not respect uh, we weekends. We are just really here for them. It's, it's a calling, it's a passion, and no matter what happens, we are here for them. Thank you to all our frontliners, and especially this time of year, our nurses. Matsuki Hirayama, KUAM News. Now for a look at your world at home, here's a view captured from the beautiful island of Rhoda. This is at the Taga Laddie Stone Quarry. It reminds me of crop circles in a way, but glad to see some sunshine outside today. And it was much needed for sure. The Guam National Weather Service predicting Friday into the weekend mostly cloudy. Scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms and a 40% chance of rain. We'll be right back. Hafidei Guam, this is Telo Tairigui. Fighting for you has been my honor. Regardless of the politics and the challenges we face, I've worked hard every day to improve GMH facilities, fund security cameras for public safety, support road repairs, and call out legislation and decisions that break the people's trust in government. The fight for these priorities isn't over. It's just begun. I'm Telo Tairigui. I approve this message and humbly ask for your vote. Howdy, folks. Nobody loves a Guam potluck more than I do. That's why I always bring my world-famous chicken served any way you like it. Original recipe, extra crispy tenders, Kentucky Fried Wings, and more. Hmm. All right. And nothing completes a meal like KFC's signature sides. Hot mashed potatoes with gravy, coleslaw, and a flaky biscuit. The world's favorite chicken right here on the island and only at KFC Guam. Whoops. Well, it is finger looking good. Power on with the strength of a Ram during Ram Power Days, happening now at Cars Plus Guam. 
Save up to $8,000 off on a brand new Ram truck today. My name is Jose Delgado, and you can contact me at 671-929-3645 to schedule a test drive, or you can visit our website at carsplusguam.com to learn more. Cars Plus, driven by you. Buenas, I'm Amanda Shelton. Whether creating the first Veterans Bill of Rights, increasing scholarship funding for college students, creating the Opioid Recovery Fund, providing pandemic relief to companies, or pushing to raise the cost of living for our Manamku, my time as a lawmaker has always been about empowering people. Please re-elect Amanda Shelton for Senator, Johnny Cole Torres Treasurer. Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment, and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. I'm here with Jiro Spiritu from the Guam Football Association here to talk about this weekend's girls football festival taking place on Sunday at the National Training Center. So very soon we're going to be launching um, Guam Football Association strategic plan for December 2022 to December 2026. And one of the key pillars in our strategic plan is to grow participation uh, with an emphasis on uh, girls and women uh, in the sport of football. And so um, in order to celebrate that launch, we decided to put together a girls football festival. Uh, so we're inviting all girls from the U6 to U15 age group. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun activities here. So in addition to uh, small sided matches, we're also going to have kind of like a carnival style atmosphere where we're going to have face painting. We're going to have henna tattoos, um, photo booth, uh, a dunking booth. Uh, and um, of course, you know, one of the main attractions is the girls get to meet members of the Masakata, our Guam women's national team. And also, um, they can enter for a chance to win an autographed jersey and an autographed match ball by the women's team. And this comes at a perfect time because the GFA will also be signing a pledge with Guam Cancer Care, joining uh, the fight against uh, cancer. So we'll be joining Guam Cancer Care in, in their mission and to disseminate information about screening and, and about, you know, all, you know, everything about treatment and, and also just health and well-being in general for preventative measures. Um, in addition to the signing on, on Saturday uh, with Guam Cancer Care, so the GFA itself will also be signing a pledge with Guam Cancer Care on Saturday at 10 a.m. Uh, during the Triple J Auto Group Robbie Weber Youth Soccer League matches. In years past, GFA held uh, soccer matches for the middle school girls, but now you guys are going younger to the grassroots level with uh, the U6. We wanted to increase participation by girls and women, and of course, starting at our youngest age group in the youth league, which is U6. Um, so uh, we, in the future, would like to see an all girls uh, division, starting from the U6 division all the way up to U15. Uh, and that way it also serves as a feeder program into our women's leagues and also our girls youth national teams as well. And for more information on Sunday's event, how can people register or get more info? So to register for Sunday's event, um, you can log on to our official website, so guamfa.com and click on the web banner for the uh, girls football festival. And we're, we're looking, uh, we're expecting maybe about, maybe 150 to 200 participants. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together.
This burger looked at one slice of melted cheese and said, more cheese. It looked at pickles and said, also onions. It wanted to be more than hot. It wanted to be juicy. This is the Quarter Pounder with cheese. If you thought one napkin for the Quarter Pounder with cheese was enough, it's not enough. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. Don't need to work, babe. Keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replace. And I'll be around. Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Taco Bell is so good and so cheap. I know, right? I wonder why. What if they know we're broke? What if they're trying to be the good guys? Ah. Thanks, Taco Bell! Welcome back. In this week's Touching Bases, we head to Anderson Air Force Base, where activities for fire prevention we concluded with an open house for those on the northern base. Here's Jonah and Charkris. Fire Won't Wait, Plan Your Escape was this year's theme for Fire Prevention Week. To close out a week filled with education, activities, and events held by all stakeholders and community partners, an open house hosted by Anderson Fire and Emergency Services was held at Station 1 on the base over the weekend. Fire Lieutenant Nino Garcia. We're trying to promote making home fire escape plans and promote safety and fire prevention, not just throughout Anderson, but the whole island of Guam. The open house included static displays, extrication and live fire demonstrations, giveaways, and of course, the all-important message of creating and practicing a fire escape plan for schools, homes, and businesses. It was last week that Brigadier General Paul Birch proclaimed October 9th through the 15th as Fire Prevention Week during a ceremony on the Northern Base, also recognizing the 100th anniversary of its inception. Throughout the week, crew members took part in community outreach and school educational talks. Garcia says the event would not have been possible without the following sponsors. The United States Air Force Chaplain Corps, the USO, and the 36th Civil Engineer Squadron. We'd also like to thank our partners, Guam Fire Department. It's our privilege to maintain a long-lasting relationship with them. With this week's Touching Bases, I'm Jonah Gancharfres. And we wrap up the show with your birthday shout outs. Jesse Opena, you are getting a special birthday cake emoji from your familia and friends. And your shout out is happy birthday, Jesse. Enjoy your special day and may all your birthday wishes come true. Very good job, guys. On this October 20th, happy 19th birthday to Lawrence Flores coming from your family. And they say we love you and have a great day. Very nice. Joe San Augustine, a member of our family here at KUM. Hey, Joe. Happy birthday blessings to Papa Love, Ari Ray, and the entire familia. And Caitlin Bloss, wishing my girl Caitlin a very happy birthday. Love, Auntie Ag. Happy birthday, Joe, and everyone else out there celebrating. You too can be a part of our Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by checking out KUAM.com. And that's the show this Thursday. Thank you so much for being here with us. I'm Nick Delgado. And I'm Hannah Devonzo. Stay safe and good night. Good night. Yes.